Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, December 10, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Actually, in spite of the fact that the S&P 500 wasn't down all that much today, you see the spiders in the aftermarket trading down 55 cents. All in all, it was actually an active day. There was a lot of stuff going on. We have a lot to discuss. You see a bunch of lines on the chart. We have a couple that should seem familiar. 364.38 was a former high. That's the former big breakdown candle high right here. That was from the 9th of November. Below that, we had the gap at 382.83. I was looking for the gap. That would be the better opportunity for the lower risk trade. If they dropped into the gap this morning, and we'll go over the specifics from an intraday perspective shortly, but early in the morning, I would have been a buyer at the gap. However, what they did, and here we go again with the there's no accidents or coincidences, Let's take a look at where the low of the day actually was in relation to the 364.38. Low of day comes in at 364.43. They come up a nickel short, turn around, and head back in the other direction. What did we talk about this general zone? The general zone was basically the market coming back to check in at a former breakout area. Again, it's somewhat subjective exactly what price to the penny where that breakout area will be determined by where the market comes back to check in at. We do the best we can. They came up a nickel short of where I thought the top end of the area actually was. Either way, from a learning perspective in concept, that's exactly what happened. And what we always say was when they come into these areas, it should be good for at minimum of an intraday support slash bounce slash rally away from that area. It was. What else jumps off the page on the daily chart? What else do we have to discuss? Well, do they have to be done on the downside? And the answer is absolutely not. They could go back down tomorrow. They could go back down next week. We don't know that they will or they won't. What we're looking at was today's activity from an intraday perspective and we're looking at the daily chart and when you look at the daily chart you have to separate it from with what happened from an intraday perspective today only the intraday activity what i mean by that is basically this is the way i look at it from where i sit the question becomes to myself and again inside my head we all know the routine dangerous place to be did they do enough on the downside to satisfy a working off some of the fictitious slash unmeasurable overbought condition did they come into a former breakout area run a sufficient test what about the 20 period moving average are they really going to leave it alone are they going to leave that gap alone do they need to really make some more people believe that a top could be in Maybe a top is in, maybe it's not. That's not what we're discussing right now. We're discussing what happens over the next couple of days. Well, all that stuff thrown in the bucket, how do we gauge what's going on? Well, yesterday's close is an important spot. It was an important spot this morning. It was an important spot today since we had a gap down. Therefore, rallying back up to reach Yesterday's close is the first order of business that the bulls need to do to get a rescue operation or recovery operation underway. What was yesterday's close exactly? How about 366.85? Where was the close today? 366.73. They spent a lot of time above 366.85, above yesterday's close, yet they closed below it. Does that tell us anything? Well, I think it's a puzzle piece and I think it's on the table. It tells me that they weren't able to close above yesterday's close. Therefore, the rescue or repair operation from yesterday's relatively standard outside day candle, it's not underway yet. The rescue operation isn't underway yet until and unless they can get above and start closing daily back above yesterday's close. That tells me the door is open to both situations. 
The door is open to another attempt at higher prices tomorrow. The door is also open to another down day, a gap down, any kind of down, as long as 366.85 is going to act as resistance to the market. Let's do the exercise where we work down to different time frames one at a time, take a look at what we've got on the chart, see what the chart is really reporting back to us. Does the 240 chart really tell us anything different than the daily chart tells us? We had a nice candle in the first candle of the day, yet price was not able to sustain itself above that candle. Doesn't mean it won't, doesn't mean it can't, it just didn't yet. But there's really nothing relevant on this chart that tells us anything we don't already know. We should note that they did come in to test once again. It wasn't far into the 240 chart, but they came into the 20 period moving average, did spike below it, but look what happened. It was recovery back above the 20 period moving average. Where did they close the day? Pretty much right on top of the 20 period moving average. Technically, the 20 period is at 366.77 and price closed a few pennies below it. But for all intents and purposes, they closed on the 20. What about the 120 minute chart? Do we have any new information on this chart? And I would say, and I would submit that we do. They came into the 50 period moving average, bounced pretty crisply away from there. And now what they're doing for the remaining three 120 periods today, and one of them is just a portion at the end of the day, but what they're doing here is they've got some kind of a bullish, flaggish, wedgish thing going inside the breakup candle on this 120 minute chart. So I think that's of note. It's a puzzle piece. It's on the table. We know something else too. We know that if price gets below today's low, that's trouble. We immediately look down toward the gap at 362.83 or even lower. You see on this chart, the gap is actually slightly below. So you see how this all works. It depends on what chart you're looking at. What about the hourly chart? The hourly chart is much like the 120 minute chart in concept. They didn't reach the 100 period moving average today, came up short and they're really making some kind of a bullish, wedgish, flaggish kind of thing, building some energy to get through the overhead resistance right now, which is really at the two moving averages or the convergence of those moving averages. More likely, what you really see as the resistance and what we saw today was 367.50 at the end of the day. That'll come into play when we discuss the notes inside the numbers. And by the way, just as a little bit of a wet your whistle scenario, we had the numbers today. Are we going to see anything different than we see on an hourly chart on a 30 minute chart? Not really move along 15 minute chart starts to look more like an intraday chop shop formation. The price in and around 366 was also important from an intraday perspective. You'll see that noted inside the numbers as well. That's right down there in case you missed it. Maybe that's enough talk around inside the numbers. Let's actually go inside the numbers. Now, if you're at all active during the trading day, I urge you pay attention today. There's some good stuff. You're going to learn some stuff and you're going to have the opportunity to say, how do you know that? This morning we were raking up relatively flat on the day. We had them pretty much eating time off the clock overnight early in the morning. The early thoughts, the first thing is we're in contract rollover phase, which means that we're going to start trading the March ES contract going forward tomorrow, probably stay with the December. They're both trading. They're both liquid. I just have to do the work in the March contract. I'm not looking forward to it. I'd rather do it over the weekend than tonight. Let's see what else we've got. Pretty straightforward this morning. As long as they're trading down, the target is the numbers and the zone discussed last night in the common sense market analysis video. That's this video between 364.38, which is the big breakdown candle high. They busted out above and the gap at 362.83. These numbers obviously at this point are already familiar to you. In that zone is the target. What about the other side? What happens if they rally instead? Same number from late yesterday, 367.50. Write that down on a sticky note. 
Now here's the first telltale sign something is maybe in the category of a fake decline. Similar to yesterday, I find it interesting that most stocks are simply floating around in the pre-market rather than finding themselves under early selling pressure. We don't know just yet, but could be an early sign we're in the midst of a garden variety pullback in a continued uptrend for now. That's a little inside my head first thing in the morning. Let's move along, see what else we've got. 910, obviously still in the pre-market. Not sure about the jumbled words here. I didn't pick that up when I typed it in. We're looking at the tape this morning. They're headed to a destination. That was the point. And the setup was if they were going to rally them at the open, it was going to be a sell the rip market because they're going to get into the zone. That was the concept at 910. The only thing that would change going back down is over 367.50. So you basically have an early idea of what I'm looking at. 925, they'll probably whip around for a while. So as usually, we'll let them go. We like to get a handle on the storyline. So early on, I'm targeting the gap. Doesn't mean everybody's targeting the gap. I'm just telling you what I'm targeting. Didn't get there, so I didn't get the early buy at the lows. That's okay. There's always another trade around the corner. And of course, we'll make any needed adjustments later. 9.33, need I say more about stocks on the move? Nice trades. We'll get to those later. That's a little bit of a wet your whistle. Already, by 9.34, they just dropped them at the open spy getting into the top end of the zone. Remember, 364.38. Low of day, already by 9.39, they were already bouncing them, 364.43. It was kind of like they're either going to come back down to screw everybody that bought them early over, and this is the early buy the dip crowd, or they're just going to rip them away and never get into the zone. That's what they did. They ripped them away. So already by 941, I'm discussing the gap left open from yesterday's close is 366.85. And then remember 367.50. Let's go get the lay of the land. You know the routine. Right of the vertical, today's activity, five minute chart. You have some lines on the screen. 367.50 is up here. 366.85 down here. That's the gap left open from yesterday, and the 367.50 is just important. Down here, 364.38, you see where they came up short. They dropped them at the open. They ripped them up. You have to know where they're headed. The gap left open from yesterday is magnetic. You need to know your numbers. Therefore, I put it on the board immediately. As they're ripping them back up, you know what they're doing. They're going to a destination. What's the likely destination? Well, the gap is like magnetic. It's going to draw price in. You got to put it on the board. Let's move along, see what else we've got. Little levity early in the morning. Buy the dip crowd showed up right away. Wonder if they knew about 364.38. Sometimes they come up short. Sometimes they spike it through. We say it here almost every single day at least once. So already you have to kind of start to shift the thinking. What are they doing? What's the lay of the land? They don't have to be done yet, and that early in the morning, they could have easily come back down. They do it all the time, but closing hourly above the gap left open from yesterday takes any further downside off the table while they're above. So that's important to know. If they're closing candles and then closing hourly above the gap left open from yesterday, we're not really looking for another collapse. We're not looking for downside. We're actually looking for them to actually build energy, eat some time off the clock, and make another push higher. To where? Well, the first step would have been 367.50. Now, it's close by, and they did that right away, but that's the concept. That's the way this works, moving right along. Here's another blurb on a couple of these stocks on the move, SBE and SPCE. You never know which ones are going to give you the rocket ride. We'll talk about those later when we go to the charts. I'll save that discussion. Now by 9.55, they filled the gap. Now it's showtime for the bulls to close the hour above. The hour closes at 10.30. A lot of time left on the clock. Still, a lot can happen. That's an awareness. We have to be aware of where we are, what the lay of the land is, what the storyline is, and what the important numbers are. Are they above or below an important number? So now I'm just giving you inside my head more stuff. We don't know for sure, but a lot of the times, and I go with the, this happens the majority of the time, they continue to hang around an important number at the end of an hour. It also reconfirms that the number is in fact an important number. 
And then here again, 367.50. Moving right along. So by 10.03, we're saying 367.50 should remain resistance for now. If they push above, there's another leg of the short squeeze on hand. We're watching for candle closes above what? The gap left open from last night. Bulls are in charge at present. That's Captain Obvious talking. If they start closing candles and pushing over 367.50, watch out above, they'll run. Moving right along. Again, 367.50 is the bogey. They've got to get above it. And as you know from the end of the day, they never really did sustain price above that number. It was, in fact, resistance. It is, in fact, important. Let's move it along. So here's where you start to narrow the field a little bit. The volume dries up. The market gets really, really quiet. And therefore, the range typically narrows a little bit. So 1031, here we go. Not enough mustard in the jar to get above 367.50. Fair enough. Doesn't mean they won't be able to do it later. We don't know at that point. Now it makes sense for them to eat some time off the clock. Staying above 366.85 would be convenient and the most bullish thing they can do other than being above 367.50. So you have the numbers, you have the schematic. You move on a few minutes later, if they drop them, 366 or a spike through should be support at least on the first hit. Back to the charts, there's 366, the lower horizontal line, and you can see they did drop them. It was support. They did spike it by a little bit. The low here was 365.75. At the time, I was looking for a little bit lower. Why? Because in real time, you have to make an adjustment. I didn't need the adjustment, yet I was looking for a lower price because they came close. They rallied away. They came close again. They rallied away. I don't want that because it's not the same trade as if they came straight into 366 like we talked about while the market was already up here. The fact that they came close and bounced away a couple of times, it changes the trade. It's not the same trade. It doesn't mean it won't work. It's not the same type of risk reward setup. That's the reason why I suggested a lower price inside the numbers, which you'll see later on in the notes. They didn't get to my lower price, but again, there's a mindset involved here. Let me give you inside my head, and this is really just from the seat of a trader. Let's think about what happened earlier in the day. Before they came into 366, we had a couple of stocks on the move give good trades. Let's assume for the purposes of this conversation that I was in the green for the day, or any trader was in the green for the day. Now you have a trade coming in in the afternoon. You're positive for the day. It's not the same trade that it would have been maybe an hour or two ago. It's a pretty good number, but it's not the same trade. What do you do? You err on the side of caution if you're treating this as a business and you take a lower number saying, hey, if they come into my new number, I'm happy to take the trade but I'm only happy to take the trade at my number, not somebody else's number, because the situation changed. That's from the mind of a trader. Moving right along. 1043, could a trader be long against candle closes against the gap left open from yesterday? Yes, higher risk. The lower risk setup was if they sustained price above 367.50. Something for everybody, everybody's got a different risk tolerance. Moving right along. The morning's coming to a close. I'm taking an early break today, so there's your 1047 post. And then you come back after lunch, and guess what? They're in the same spot they were when I left, 367.50. They're working it. And this is citing the situation where they went down toward 366, but they came up short. Moving right along. And there's where I changed the price. 366, is it the same now because they came up short? And the answer is no. Might still work and produce another bounce, but it's not the same trade. Here's where I put another number up on the board. And then here's another one for you. If they're making a higher low from an intraday perspective, which they were in the process of doing, they'll make another attempt at 367.50. And there she goes, 321, you see that, and here's the rest of the day. We're back on the chart because we want to take a look at what happened at the end of the day? They ran up to make another attempt at 367.50. 
The high was 367.47, and then the high was 367.48, and then they sold off. And there are no accidents nor coincidences in the market. That number was magnetic because it's important. It drew price into it. What about stocks on the move? We had four up on the board today. We had Sienna. We had SE that didn't hit its number, so it's off the board. We had SPCE and SBE. Let's go to the videotape. Sienna, first one up on the board, getting a haircut at the open. The stock rips lower at the open, going all the way through both prices, going right to where? Right to the stop. I think it spiked it by seven cents, and that's an hourly stop, so nobody stopped out five minutes into the trade. We paint by numbers. Half at the first number, half at the second number. The stock turns around minutes later, rips higher, and what was it at just by 10.25 in the morning, 46.69. So at any point in time, if you're painting by the numbers, it did the deal that was in fact an area of support. No, thy numbers. Stocks are headed to a destination. In fact, today, the stop was 43.70. The low was 43, I believe, 63. Yep, on low, 43.63. And so guess what? That's also an important number. So they ran a test of the stop. So be it. These are not arbitrary numbers. How about Virgin Galactic, SPCE? Check this out. Number up on the board, 29.85. By the way, on it, bright and early. What was low of day? 29.61. Turned around, rocket ride in the other direction. This is better than a base hit. You never know which ones are going to give you the double, triple, or home run. It depends on how longer a trader held on to whatever portion of the position that he or she did. What do we teach? We teach to sell a portion of the position when you get the base hit under your belt because you never know which ones are going to give you the rocket ride. And the only real way I know to make this into an emotionless, risk-free opportunity that lets you take advantage of one of those quote-unquote all-day suckers, if you will, is to have books and profit and just don't let the remaining portion of what you're holding go negative on you. That's it. You get stopped out a lot, but guess what? You get these too. If you just painted by the numbers with this one alone, it was up at 32.60 on the high today. How you doing? How about this one? Switchback Energy Acquisition Corp. SBE. Who are they? Who knows? They're three letters that trade every single day. That's all we need to know. Two numbers up on the board, 3856, 3720. The first number comes in, spikes it by a little, low of day, 3817. Rip roar and rip higher within minutes, almost up to 42 bucks, 4198 in this candle, and then they did it again, and then they did it again. And again, same routine. Painting by the numbers, you get more than a base hit on these two, this one and the previous one. It's up to you whether or not you want to employ that strategy, but the strategy works when it works. When it doesn't work, you still got to win under your belt by getting a base hit. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Guess what? Big up day, well, I shouldn't say big up day, but an up day 1% nonetheless, almost two bucks. Is anything wrong with the IWM? Absolutely not. They're knocking on the highs they made yesterday. Nothing wrong with this chart, just move it along. By the way, before we move it along, I should note this is my favorite market leading indicator. And what's it telling us? That there's nothing wrong with this chart. My second favorite market leading indicator, the folks down at the transportation department, however, had a pretty decent down day, down about 1%. They were down more earlier. They had a nice little recovery. It's in an uptrend. They didn't even get to the 20 period moving average yet. It's just a down day. Nothing more, nothing less. The trend is your friend until it's not. Just to put it in perspective, unless something weird and wacky happens on Friday, What's the likelihood that this is going to remain in an uptrend through the end of the week? And the answer is, it likely will. Unless they're going to sell off a couple of thousand points, it's extended from home base. They can banter back and forth, they can have some other down days, and they can still remain in a long-term uptrend for a while. 
You start getting below 12,500 on daily closes, start pushing below the 20 period moving average, and there's likely some more downside. Until and unless something like that happens, they're just in a daily chart chop shop formation. Here's an interesting one, the folks out in Silicon Valley, the Qs. So here's what we've got. We've got a nice reversal candle yesterday, and today they have a bounce come up short of the 20 period moving average and have a bounce back to where? Interestingly enough, and this is how you know these numbers are important, 303.50. They went slightly above it, 303.68 was the high, but yet they closed below it, so that's going to be our line in the sand for the time being. Are they going to work their way up the breakdown candle? It's possible. How do we know that? Because markets do that over and over and over again. Did they close the day inside of yesterday's close? The answer is yes, they did. So here the contrast to the SPY is they filled the gap and they closed above the gap. The SPY fills the gap but didn't close above the gap. So that just to compare and contrast the markets, when you look at the charts, the same rules apply. doesn't matter what the name on the chart is. And this is how we gauge one market versus another and one's weaker, stronger, and some matter and some don't. So for example, if money's going to run into a market, is it going to run into the queues or into growth type stuff before it runs into the Dow stodgy stuff? And the answer is probably yes. We're just talking around things. So I'm saying that there was more buying pressure today, which pushed price over yesterday's close, allowed them to close of it. But technically speaking, any way you want to look at it, that's a positive development for the queues. Back below it, not so much. Financials, XLF, anything wrong with this market? Absolutely not. You know what the target is? The target is 30 bucks. What are they doing right now? They're eating time off the clock. They're going back and forth. The uptrend is intact. The moving averages are moving up and they want to go to 30 bucks. How and when they get there is a story in and of itself. About Smash Mouth, let's compare and contrast what a similar chart to the Qs looks like, which is SMH, where did they close the day? They closed the day slightly above, but yet above. They didn't have to, but they did yesterday's close. So there's no accidents or coincidences. We're in an uptrend. You had a down day yesterday. You had an up day today. What do we make out of that? Well, it wasn't really much of an up day, but it's still finished positive. What do we make out of that? Nothing yet because the trend is up. The trend is the more dominant thing, remember? doesn't mean they can't come back down. Remember, we talked about they could come all the way back down to 209 and not really show a bleep on the chart, meaning the longer term chart. We talked about that a couple of days ago. The low today was almost 211. Not bad for two days work. I didn't know they were going to come down the following two days. But yet again, they can still get to 209 and not do any damage on the chart whatsoever. How about 207? They can even get into 207. As long as they don't start closing below the 20 period moving average, they're okay on the daily chart. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. It's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.